This week, the big banks finished reporting earnings results, and now big tech is on deck. Our next guest thinks the market may be a bit too optimistic about earnings growth this year. Joining us now is Keith Gangel, Gradient Investments Portfolio Manager. Keith, it is good to see you. So maybe we'll just start with the news today. You know, the S&P 500, Keith, rose to an all-time high I I this afternoon. So I'm curious, as you look out, you know, 2024, you know, in December 2024, Keith, where do you think the SPX, the S&P 500 is? Is, is it higher, lower, or about the same? We think it's higher. It's going to be a grind to get there. We think at the end of the year, it's going to be more of a normalized return, like that's 7 to 10%. So obviously, compared to last year, that will be a little bit less. But I think it's going to kind of, those first three weeks, kind of what the market's going to be. It's going to be a grind. When I was talking to people the last few days, asking, where do you think the market is, you know, year to date? Most people are, oh, the market's down, you know, 2%. In actuality, it was flat to slightly up. I think that's what the year is going to be. I think it's going to be a good year but it's going to be a grind to get there. And earnings will be the driver. When you mentioned that I think earnings is a little bit too high, I think estimates are for 12% earnings growth. I think that's too high. I think it's going to be that 7 to 10% range. And if it's in 7 to 10% range, I think that'll be well enough for a tailwind for the overall market to grind higher. But it's going to be fits and starts. I think it's going to be a lot like we've seen those first three weeks. And Keith, there was a lot of excitement at the last press press conference. Uh, people called it the Powell pivot. Whether or not you believe that, uh, I just want to get to the heart of the matter that rate cuts were getting priced in aggressively, uh, over 80% chance in March, and that has now dwindled, dwindled to less than 50%. What do you think happens, and then how do you think the market prices that? Yeah, you're exactly right. And that's kind of what the last little lift off in the end of year was with the Fed expectation that we started seeing a cut. Right, money gets easier. Stock market traditionally does well. I think people got a little too excited on that. I think that 80% is down to, like you said, 50%. I actually think it's probably closer to zero. I don't think the Fed needs to start cutting yet. But on the flip side, I didn't think the Fed needed to raise the last couple of rates. So I think now they're in the done. We're not raising rates anymore, which is fantastic for the overall stock market. The question is, when will they start cutting? I think that cutting will happen later in the year. So I do think they've cut but it won't be as soon as what people want and maybe hope. So maybe that could be a little bit of a disappointment here in the next few weeks. We'll see. But I do think earnings will be the key driver, and we'll see a lot more earnings reports in the next two weeks. And, and Keith, as the S&P 500 rises to this all-time high here in today's trade, how does valuation look to you? Yeah, valuation is full, so that's one thing I worry about. So that's why we need to see that market grow. You know, 12% EPS growth would be fantastic. I think it's more like that 7% to 10% return and that's where you can get that you know market going up with it i don't think you're gonna see valuation increase at all so we think the magnificent seven would kind of hangs in there everybody's expecting some kind of you know selling of that group and get you know wider in the market we think that could happen but we also still like those names as well in in terms of sectors i'd like to get your take on what you like in the market right now i know you have some retail names and some healthcare names i just throw out that mcdonald's just hit an intraday record high first time in months um so we are seeing uh, some price improvement on some of these names yeah those are two sectors that we like a lot this year consumers kind of that's kind of an odd consensus call right now again everybody's kind of a little bit nervous going in this year in the consumer we had a great year last year but one of the reasons we like the consumer is unemployment rate. Unemployment's at 3.7%. When the U.S. consumer has money in their pocket, when they're working, they love to spend, and they'll spend on, on retail names. That's why we like it. McDonald's was a recent purchase. We did it last fall when the market, when it was selling off. It was selling off a little bit due to the GLP drugs that everybody's worried that, that these things would cure everything, you know, overweight, people would eat out less. McDonald's was certainly in the crosshairs. We think that was a little bit overblown, so that's the reason we actually added McDonald's, and now it's had a nice move on to the upside. And I know another name you like, Keith. You see some some opportunity in the healthcare sector, uh, specifically UNH, United Health. What, why is that a buy, yeah. in your opinion? We like United Health. It's a long-term compound grower. It's a fantastic company. They just reported last week, and it was actually a great quarter on EPS and revenue, but the stock was actually down, and the reason it was down because of the costs were a little bit higher, which gets the number is the MLR number people look at. They were expecting an 82% number. It came in at 83%. Higher numbers is negative for the MLR. So when that goes up, stock reacted negatively to it. We think that's a buying opportunity. We'd like this name long-term going forward. And we think this name is going to grow in you know, at you know, 18 to 22%. You're paying a 16 multiple. So these are kind of names we like to buy when they go on sale, especially after this quarter. It wasn't that bad. They actually beat and raised numbers. So we think when people take a step back, this is a good name to be buying at these levels. 
And Keith, all of this ties into, in the backdrop, we got the bond market and the foreign currency market. And the trend this year, and it's only been a half a month, but the trend in rates has been up. The trend in the U.S. dollar has been stronger. How does this fit into your view? Yeah, that'll be a little bit of a headwind. We'll see. We think, obviously, I think why the rates are backing up is the expectation that the Fed won't be cutting as much or as soon as what some people thought. I think that's what we're seeing a little bit of a backup. The economy remains strong. I think that, you know, that 10 year yield is going to remain at, you know, four or almost four, 415. That could go up to four and a quarter, maybe four and a half. I don't think so. I think, you know, the first half of the year, it means around 4%. We go out throughout the year. I think by year end, it's going to be more like that three and a half percent. And that's going to be more normalized for long term. We're not used to it. If you look at the last decade, we want, you know, 0% rate was fantastic for the overall markets, but the markets can do very well with at three and a half percent interest rates. And Keith, I want to get you out of here on this. You know, there was this, uh, this interesting piece in the journal this week, Keith, it made, made some headlines, got some attention. They were kind of talking about just the big pile of money sitting on the sidelines, Keith, by their math. I think it was a, around $8.8 .8 trillion in money markets and CDs. Should investors think of that too, Keith? Is that a potential tailwind, in your opinion, for the stock market this year? Or no, that's, you know, that's overstated. Don't, don't bet on that money moving into equity funds. Somewhere in between there, I don't think that's a big catalyst, but I do think that's a cushion, right? People are moving their money from their CD rates where they weren't making anything or their bank's rates into this money market, and that's where you see that $8 trillion. I do think if people start seeing this market run up again, some of that money will move in and chase the market, so that will probably be the last leg of a nice kind of bull run here in the this course of this next couple of years. But I don't certainly see that $8 trillion coming in to support the overall stock market, but certainly some of it will, so again, I wouldn't get too overly excited, but it is a nice cushion to have there. If the doom markets do dip, we'll recommend to our advisors and clients they actually use that money in the money markets to actually buy stocks to help support them.